Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel, Corey here. It's pretty early in the morning, <laughs> but I thought I would sit down and film at least one more video for you. And that is basically all of the yummy Halloween decks that I'm pulling out of my collection that I'm going to be using this month. October is a fabulous, fabulous month for divination. Mostly because we have Samhain coming up. We have Halloween, October 31st, which is the uh, last harvest Sabbath that we have and the Witch's New Year. Just like Beltane, which occurs in the spring, we have well, the, the peak of spring, actually. We have a thinning of the veil. And what that means is we're talking about the veil between worlds being thin enough to reach through and communicate with the other side. Not that we can't communicate with the other side and with other astral planes throughout the year, but this time of year, it's, it's juicier, it's easier. I don't really know how to describe it. It's a very, palpable the energy that's in the atmosphere and so I love working with divinate the working with any sort of divination tool during this time you guys know how much I love love working with my pendulums I also have scrying mirrors that I'm going to be busting out here in the next week or so Scrying with water, candle wax scrying, tea leaf reading. Oh, I love all of it. I just, I love all of it. But decks are my first love. So it's kind of hard not to play around with a ton of them, especially during this time. So if you watched my last video, you'll have seen the gorgeous, Mary L. Tarot, and that is one that I'm going to be working with quite a bit. I can already tell this month. It's just a luscious, dark, um, fantastic deck. And I know I already flipped through, you know, a lot of these. Here, look at that devil. In my last video. Uh, okay, the tower card is super special to me. Um, and so the tower is one of several cards that I look at in a tarot deck when deciding whether or not I want to get it. If I like the, tar the tower, uh, then that means it's the deck's probably going to work with me. <laughs> We're, we're going to jive. Um, if I don't like the tower, might not be the deck for me. Um, and again, it's not the only card that I look at. I also end up looking at the Empress, um, the Hermit as well is another one that is really important to me as far as certain imagery. So, that luscious tower. Look at that. We are we are burning it down, man. So just something that I consider when I look at a deck. Judgment card. Oh my god. It's just <gasps> there's such powerful imagery in this deck that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to keep my hands off of it. So Definitely will be working with this one. It's not a brand new deck. It's just new to me. Um, it was handed off by somebody else who just wasn't jiving with it anymore. And I've been wanting to get my hands on that deck for years. The next one I already pulled out in September because <laughs> I was like, I can't. And that is the Marigold Tarot. I won't. Ooh, bore you guys by doing a huge flip through because there's an unboxing 
already on my channel, but love, love, love this stack. This is like a quintessential fall freaking deck right here. And I love it so much. Look at the bat. Oh, I can't. Like, there's so much that the artist did with this deck. She's just phenomenal in her artwork. And seeing this deck get printed and come to life was just, it's just magical. So super excited to be working with this one. I might even open up client readings with this deck. I think I'm there with how I feel about it and the energy. I tend to, when I get a new deck, like to work with it on a personal level first, see how it reads for me before I incorporate it into my client rotation, only because if a deck <laughs> ends up kind of skewing a certain way and I'm not necessarily prepared for it when I get the message, then it kind of makes for an awkward video. So, <laughs> um, like to like to make sure I get the feel of it first before I really go ham and throw that at somebody new. Now, this is another Kickstarter one. <laughs> This is the Sinking Wasteland Tarot. And I haven't showed this one, I think, on my channel. Um, and I haven't really worked with it a whole lot since receiving it. We've got yummy gold gilded edges here. And this is a very, like, comic noir type feel with the imagery that we have going on. Um, and so definitely, definitely a darker mood, um, considering that the use of color really only lends to the hue of the deck. You can see this one skews green, this one skews blue, um, and then we've got the major arcana here in black. So. It's kind of a interesting color scheme going on here, but I like it. Like I said, it's very like gothic noir, you know, in, in the vibe and the style is comic. And I like it. I, I just, I dig it a lot. And it's just got unconventional imagery here. Like you see all of the elements of the child and the horse and the sun and the sunflowers that you would see from the Rider Waite Smith. But this is like, it's thrown at you in a very different way. And I like that. So definitely excited to work with this stock um this month in particular so oh in the, the back you guys look at this backing sun moon just it's really gorgeous deck so happy to pull that one out now this next one wasn't on kickstarter but definitely an indie deck um and one that I haven't played around with a whole lot, just like Sinking Wasteland Tarot, and that is the Disciples Tarot. The box is pretty beat up, as you can see. But this deck, you guys. So there's some intense imagery here, just FYI. Here's the back. And it's reversible. So if you do read reversals, we're starting off with some, some dark one here, the devil. Yeah. And so this is a 
photorealism deck in the same fashion that the moon child and star child's tarot would be. Okay, so we've got actual photorealistic elements compiled together. That ten of swords, that is intense. And the face and the moon, so this imagery is definitely, this is a really good shadow working deck in my opinion because it really pushes with the imagery into like your comfort zone and what you're anticipating as far as imagery for that card. Um, it's not as uncomfortable as like the next deck that we're going to talk about, <laughs> but it's, it does have some like really intense visuals, which I like. It doesn't hold back in the positive or the negative. It like really stretches the imagination. So that's what I love the most. And all the webs, man, the, the border on these cards is one of the things that I really love because even though it creeps into the photo, I feel like it doesn't detract from the imagery. I feel like it adds to it. So I, I really dig it. It still feels very Halloween-esque in my opinion, and also kind of vaudeville. I don't know why, but it has that feeling for me. I think because of the images that the artist used, um, they're very Victorian era, you know, in, in how they appear. And then you've got, you know, the steer skulls kind of juxtaposing the soft curves of the figure. So it's, like I said, it's very, like, pushy to get you out there. And it, it's not really what you expect. So that's what I love about it. This one, probably not be using with clients. <laughs> this one I'll just be using for me, maybe even so much as like a daily draw, you know, type of deal with this deck, um, but we'll see. This next one, I did an unboxing of as well, so I'm not gonna, you know, board you guys with it. You can look it up on my channel. I did this a while back, and this is the Ludi Lesko Tarot. Also, not a client deck. <laughs> and that's just because there are a lot of cards in here that are very graphic in nature, very hard to look at, especially if you're a woman, even more so if you're a mom. <laughs> so it's, the imagery is supposed to be very intense, which is why I like it but it's not something that I would just throw at an unsuspecting person, right? So let me try and find some not so intense images here. Um, so like, okay, we have the, you know, we've got, and they all have very dark, you know, undertones takes place at night so we've got the hierophant here um, we've got one of our our kings the fool and so you know the imagery is very gothic very uh intense you know coloring dark coloring uh, here's the Empress, another Queen here, Queen of Swords, looks like our King of Swords. And I just, I love the art style of this deck. It's very, it's also kind of a comic feel, but it's stunning. I love it. The artwork is one of the things that really drew me into this deck when I first purchased it. So, you know, really good one 
highly recommend if you do like the gothic culture, just be warned that some of the cards are going to be really intense. <laughs> so definitely a deck that doesn't play around, um, but yet perfect for Halloween. This deck, sorry you guys, this one's out of print, but if you don't follow Love, Light, and Legacy on Instagram, you should definitely should because the owner, Devin Strickler, is working on like a second printing of this and it's not a second printing in its original format. It's being redone. Like this is version two and it, oh, I can't wait. I definitely want to get my hands on that, but I, this, this version, the first version, will always have a special place in my heart. So this is the Moon Pieces Oracle, or is it Moon Phases? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the Moon Phases Oracle. Oh my gosh. I, I will put the name below if I bunch that up, but here we go. And it's this mini size deck and I love that so much and the images here are all about the moon as you can see but we have you know the extra cards like we had here rest but it's all around lunar activity and cycles so it's just an amazing little oracle deck and I love working with it, but I particularly love to bust it out for the second half of the year. So not just fall, but winter as well. I, I kind of feel like I get into that cycles vibe um, because this is a really great deck for like release for whatever reason. And I love it. And this was like the first deck that Devin ever did. So very excited to be working with it again. Like I said, it's probably been a good six, seven months since I last picked it up. So oh, we'll always, always hold a special place in my heart. And if you guys are interested in what's going on with the second printing, like I said, you need to go follow Love, Light, and Legacy. This guy, I've not really worked with at all. Um, but I felt like this was a second half of the year deck. And this is the Fairy Enchantments Oracle. And I haven't really had the opportunity to really take this deck out and work with it a whole lot at all other than flipping it through. Now we've got this gorgeous copper edging here, and this is also a, a kind of monochromatic deck. And what's interesting about this is that we have the Fae on the front side, and on the reverse side, we actually have the name here, and also a Fae rune, um, which is interesting. And then sort of, uh, let's see. So we have some keywords here and then color gemstone, uh, kind of a time, if you will, date, time, month, a tree, animal, bird, object, and a place. So that's a lot. <laughs> We've crammed all the information on the back for you, basically. But what really gets me with this deck is just the artistry, you know, the imagery here. Because these Fae are just stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. And I had kind of a hard time getting my hands on this deck, I'll be perfectly honest with you but I'm glad that I do have it. 
and I'm looking forward to working with that. So definitely an interesting one because of the color scheme and because of, you know, again, we've got more gothic type imagery with the Fae. Um, this definitely feels like an autumn deck, if you will. Um, so wanted to pull that one out. I've got two more guys. This next one, oh, I did an unboxing of this one as well. I really still don't know how I feel about this deck. And I think that's a good thing because when I feel challenged by a deck, it's usually because it has something really profound to teach me. So we have here the Angelarium Oracle of Emanations. And this one doesn't have a lot of cards, but again, it's got really, just like the Disciples Tarot, it pushes you with the imagery. Oof. And so it's, and the artwork is one of the things that drew me to this deck when I first saw it. Just how gorgeous these cards are. And my video just can't do this justice. I'm sorry. But these are just some intense angels here with intense messages. We have the freaking angel of punishment. What? <laughs> um, you know, the angel of mysteries, which isn't what I know Raziel to be, but this is, you know, from the artist here. So just, ugh, interesting, interesting imagery here. And intense. So if you want to see the full unboxing of this one, go check that one out. Um, but I felt like it was time to pull this one out again and, and try again <laughs> um, and see what I can connect with now that we are in a later half of the year. And this last one, <sighs> this last one, I'm really excited to finally bust out and work with. This was a um, giveaway prize from the Tarot Readers Academy. I think this was the 16th raffle that Ethany did and I won it. And I was like, what the F? Because, <laughs> I have been on the fence about buying this deck forever, it felt like. And I originally was introduced to this deck by watching the unboxing on Ethne's channel. And that is the dun, 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 Bonefire Tarot. Ah! And so I am even more excited that, of course, the one that I get is gifted from Ethne. So you guys this deck. if you love tattoo artistry like this deck you guys <sighs> it's stunning and I know I say that about a lot of my decks but you have to realize like I'm coming from an art perspective as a collector as well as a professional reader so a lot of these decks I buy because I freaking like the art like, that's it. <laughs> I love it. It's gorgeous. I want to see them. I want to touch them every day. These are like little collectible cards of artwork that I can just pull out and just get something from. And so that's really a, probably the number one reason, actually, why I collect so many decks and why I have so many decks and especially continue to collect decks from indie artists. There are several that I have that are like in production, on their way, in stages of coming over that I need to unbox or do a walkthrough for you guys. I've been meaning to do a walkthrough of our tarot. I unboxed it. It's sitting on my shelf. I have not played with her because I don't want to take her out of order. I want to show her off to you guys. 
and I have other decks, you know, that I want to do that with as well. Just got to find time. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the Bonefire Tarot. Sorry. Um, so I won't go through the whole deck again because there are tons of unboxings of this gorgeous gal on the, uh, on the knit, but as you can see here, just this, oh, this vibrant, gorgeous, colorful, yet dark artwork is just, oh, I love it so, 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 so much. And I was like, I literally like screamed when I saw Ethany post my name. I was like, oh my God. And I was not so patiently waiting by the mailbox for it to show up, to be honest with you. Oh. And so this one might actually also go into the rotation, along with the Marigold Tarot, because while this imagery is, you know, kind of darker and intense, I don't think it's overwhelming. I think it's potent but again relatable because we see this type of imagery in tattoo artwork that you know it's not going to be really unfamiliar to anybody I, I feel like everybody can find some sort of connection with this deck so oh, and there's so much in each card to grab from and work with. So really, really excited. Um, in fact, I'm going to leave this guy out over here to be consecrated and add that one in right away. So those are my Samhain decks for the month of October. Probably going to still continue to work with in through November before I trade them out for winter decks. Because there's going to be a lot for the winter decks. So I'm probably going to need to make a video for that too. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. There is a deck that I would like to add to my collection for Halloween. And I just haven't over the years for whatever reason. And that's the Deviant Moon Tarot. That deck, the imagery of that deck, I should say, has really just grown on me over the last two years. And I want it. <laughs> Not only that, but the other Oracle decks um, that the artist has made, freaking stunning. I just haven't pulled that trigger yet to buy them. But this year might be the year. We'll see. Anyway, if you have any suggestions of Samhain Halloween decks that uh, you would like me to check out, leave them in the comments below. Or just share with me, like, what decks are you working with this month? What are you going to pull out and use for your readings? Because you, know, you all know I'm a curious monkey. I like to know what you guys work with. I like to know what's going on with you. <laughs> So let me know if you're interested in the comments below or if you would like to share that information. Obviously, you don't have to. But again, I like knowing what you guys are doing, too. It makes me feel more connected to our tarot reader community here. So it is a pretty tight-knit one. And I like learning about new decks, y'all. Again, collector. Like, I'm looking at three kind of full shelves of decks here. And then the two top drawers back there are also full of decks. I may have a little problem. Um, that's it for this video, lovelies. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you got some ideas for decks for your collection if you were looking for some Halloween goodies. And I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, blessed be.